She is a Dream Team Academy student. She's 100 pounds down. Um, and now she's in the best health of her life. You know, before she joined the Dream Team Academy, one of her goals was to prevent diabetes from happening to her because it, it runs in her family. And, you know, living this healthy lifestyle, no more yo yo dieting, moving through um, the last 20 years and trying to figure out something that's going to stick, not just for a short time, but a long term solution um, to optimize your health. And here we are. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Amazing. So let's bring us back. Okay. For people that don't know, um, why did you decide to join the Dream Team Academy? Um, I had been on a little bit of a journey right before this. And so I had COVID in 2021, pretty severe. I was in the hospital for 13 days. And um, that was kind of a wake up call. And they didn't actually expect me to walk out. So when you hear that and you walk and you do walk out, you're like, okay, I'm here for a reason, but I'm going to have to like take care of some things because I don't want to be here again. <laughs> um, so I started my journey then. I changed my diet and lost them on my own. And so in January of uh, this year, I was just like, okay, what's next? Because I'm down 50 ish pounds and I got to do something. Um, so I was just scrolling the gram and I had been following you for a while, just watching your videos. And I don't know something about it. You were saying something about one of your challenges and I was like, that's what I'm going to do. That's it. That's the next step. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I reached out, we had the like gazillion question interview <laughs> to get part yes. of the <laughs> program and yeah. here I am. For people that don't know, the gazillion question interview is basically, as you guys know, there's a big waiting list of people wanting to join. And I don't know who's serious and I don't know who's not because some people can't join because they're in a you know third world country where basically they can't actually pay because the banking system's down um, or someone's underage. So we have a questionnaire form to seed out people that are actually serious um, and you know, I asked you a gazillion questions and here you are, you know, you joined. What was your first goal when you signed up? Like, what did you want to achieve? I wanted to get under 200 pounds. That was and my was, big yeah. goal. Okay, 200 I, pounds. I hadn't been under 200 pounds since I was a freshman in college. Hmm. So for me, that was like a big deal for me. It was my personal like first goal get under 200 pounds. It's very powerful that you mentioned that because on one side of things, people do say, oh, it's not about the numbers. Here's the thing, right? M numbers make things more real because people can be fit and healthy. I want to be fitter. I'm like, What does that look like? When you lose a good 100 pounds, your life of quality changes. Your quality of life completely changes. What has changed since you being, you know, not 200 pounds? I think you started at 228. Yeah, in the program, yeah. And yeah. I'm 189 today. You're 189 today, yes. You, you Every week the last month, she's like, hey, new low, hey, new low. We're not even – this program that she's in right now, guys, just give you guys some coaching um, insight. The goal is not to lose more weight. Like we're trying to maintain. We're trying to nurse an injury that she's going through and be consistent. And because of those – habits that she's created the weight is coming off in the natural domino effect of it so what was life like at 228 pounds what's a what was a day like for you like what were the struggles you were going through um, i was tired i stayed yeah. tired <laughs> um i i wasn't sleeping well at still at I mean, which was better than 289, but it's still, I still wasn't sleeping well. Um, I was still wrestling through um, a poor relationship with food. And so I was still, I could do really good for a minute and then I would binge and then be like, well, F it. <laughs> I've already screwed up now. So then, you know, it might be a week of that. And then I'm like, okay, yeah, now I'm back. And so, 
um, it was just a roller coaster of things. And I, I wasn't in a healthy place in my mentally either, you know, so it was, I was not healthy overall. I was healthier than I was before, but I still wasn't healthy. Hmm. Do you think there was a correlation between, you know, you mentioned the binge eating and the mental health. Do you think they played a part with each other? hundred percent. Yeah. I would, yeah. De de I would definitely have said previously that I, I was an emotional eater for sure. Mm. And I'm from the South of America. So, <laughs> you know, when you're in the South, every emotion involves food. Okay. If you're happy, you're going to eat and celebrate. If you're sad, let me get you a cookie, right? If you're stressed, you eat. Like that, it's part of culture too. Like, it, yes, it was me, but it's part of growing up here in this area is that's normal for everyone. And so I would definitely have been a huge emotional eater. Um, and that's been the roller coaster of my life for be beyond the you know old high school and beyond this is my whole life because as a kid you're happy you eat you're sad you eat you're mad you eat like that was just ingrained culturally as well because it was ingrained culturally how did you know it was an actual problem not just a this is life if you look around you living in the south i have i don't know what that actually looks like because i haven't been to the south but because everyone's doing it, why would you think it shouldn't be like that? So how did you like separate yourself from the norm and well, stop blazing? Well, I would back? say when I, when I went to college, I think there was a little bit of that. It was still in the South, but you know, you're, when you're in university, you're around people from everywhere, right? Not just my Southern people and other people that wasn't how they function. So I would say that's where it was first like peak. Now, did I do anything about it? No, but I had that a little bit of awareness. And then, you know, I've lived in other places in the United States, not just the South. Um, and so when I moved, I moved, I lived in the Midwest. So I lived in Kansas City, Missouri for five years. And I think that was when it was really like, wait a second. This is so different than anything I've ever experienced. And so every event didn't revolve around food. Like if they had a gathering, there wouldn't necessarily be food. And that is not the way it is in the South. If you have any gathering of any people, food is involved 100% of the time. Mm, so you'd say environment that played a big part in yeah. the change of habits and the the situations you were in that's very powerful because i've been to japan and when i go to japan everyone's kind of like a certain size mm -hmm. but then when i'm eating at certain restaurants i realize well everything's seafood and then when i went to america i go to new york and i get off the plane i order a dish they're like do you want the large the extra large or the super extra large <laughs> do you have a small yeah. <laughs> and it was like then i started feeling like i'm not eating enough like it's just the food culture right yeah, um how did you overcome these challenges in the program? Because although you did lose weight, I do recall that you struggled with like maybe dieting and yo-yo dieting and trying different things. Like what did you try in the past? Let's start there. Um, if it is a diet that exists, I've probably done it. <laughs> okay. For real, like legit. I, I have over the years, I've done HCG. I've done the like, the, I would say ghetto version of Weight Watchers because I couldn't afford Weight Watchers. So, but I did like the points and the blah, 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 blah. I, I've done the cabbage diet. I've done, you pick it and I've done it. So I've literally done everything. And so I've lost chunks of weight before, but as you know, with yo-yo dieting, you lose it and then you gain it back plus some. And then you'll do another one and you'll lose it. Great. Well, then you gain it back plus some. So, you know, 30 years of this and that got me at wow. almost 300 pounds. 30 years of yo-yo dieting, cabbage diet, 
ghetto diet, all the diets. And what shifted for you that we taught you in the academy that allowed you to eat more food, stay consistent, and like not jump for the next shiny object? I told myself when I joined, I said, I'm just going to trust what he says and I'm going to trust the process and I'm just going to see what happens. Right. Like, I, I mean, I was excited, but I've done this whole like diet thing before. So I'm like, oh, we'll see. Like, I'm excited. I want to try it, but we'll see what happens. And then, you know, I'm realizing, oh, well, when I actually do eat all the calories I'm supposed to eat, I actually get better results than yeah. when I'm trying to stay, oh, I need to eat my 11, 1200 calories, you know, because that's the brain I was in coming yeah. into the program was this like 1200 calorie low carb, you know, that's where I was joining. And so then to be like, oh no, like, you need to eat some potatoes, maybe throw a piece of toast in there. You know, like, <laughs> like that was new, that was new. And that's not been, you know, most diets outside of a balanced life are like cut your carbs because they're all bad. Mm. And so coming in and being like, no, you can have potatoes and you can have oatmeal and you can have toast and Hey, rice isn't a bad thing, you know? Yeah. So that's, extremely relatable because a lot of people that do join the program it they really struggle in the first few weeks because of that old mindset especially weight watchers you know you start counting points i mean when you look at food and you attach a point system to food it kind of like psychologically makes you look at things like there's too much points here i can't eat it whereas data-based research in terms of calories protein carbs and fats there's no gain to it these are just the actual facts mm -hmm. so if you understand the science behind it and if you understand that the more muscle you have with strength training will help you increase your metabolic rate so you can eat more food it did take us a while like i would say like with yourself your particular program there was one, I, we were battling one side of you that was doing it a certain way but you were like getting results with this new approach yeah. and it's kind of like treading the line of like small little baby steps there wasn't like for people that are watching like mel fowler when we she weighs in she does her macros she checks in she's a good student so if we look at her graph of her weigh-ins from february till now it's not like this massive drop it's like this gradual, small decrease in weight over like nine months. Mm -hmm. And because it's not this rush and it's because like, it's because she's not doing tons and thousands of calories um, and tons of cardio. She's not burning a lot of cardio. I mean, she's not using a lot of cardio as a way to lose weight. And you do about what, eight to 10,000 steps a day? Yeah, I would say I was doing more until I hurt my foot. So I'm yeah. averaging like six to eight right now. Yeah, it's not like we're doing like seven times a week weight training, three times a week cardio, 1,200 calories, 20,000. What we're doing is actually sustainable. So I said to her last week in a check-in, moving into 2024, if you just keep doing what you're doing, you're going to have a brand new body, like more than you have now because of the small progress. So that's really exciting. I wanted to share that. Um, what are some features of the program when it comes to things like fix your form or any mindset podcast that you've listened to, what's been some of the tangible practical things that you most enjoy a part of the program? Uh, this is probably the hardest question because there's so many, <laughs> there's so many things that I really love about it. But if I would say some of the same things I said before, one, the community is amazing and that is no joke. Like it's, it's positive. It is encouraging. And everyone is, even those who are struggling are still positive for other people, <laughs> you know? So that's huge. Um, I think one of the biggest things though, for me is the fact that I have access to you as my coach every day. Like, so if I have a question, if I have a concern, if I'm 
melting down, <laughs> which I've done a couple times. <laughs> like I can message you and usually within a couple hours, unless you're sleeping, obviously because of our time difference, you're usually getting back to me and that thing has been addressed. And I think that's huge because as someone who has done all the million diets to have someone who's in your corner that you can actually reach out to every day when you're struggling, that itself is gold. That's gold because I'm just like, man, I'm dying over here or I'm celebrating a victory and you're celebrating with me. Like that's huge. And they're baby goals for other people. They might not be a big deal, but to me, they're huge. So everything I do now, like all of this is new. So everything's a win. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. You know, that. It's a win. Like I'm, if I lift, you know, whatever it is, it's a win for me because I've never done it before. So this is, I'm excited when I get my like thing and it says, you went up 5%, you know, I'm like, Whoa. you know, uh, a few things I want to unpack there. Um, you mentioned before earlier in the interview that you said your relationship with food was kind of like up in the air, you know, and now in, in the program, everything is new because we reframed the language when it came to fitness, which includes nutrition and exercise. Yeah. Food is fuel. Exercise is a platform for you to grow stronger. If we can reframe your relationship and conversations about these things, your we have two um ages we have your biometric age and your metabolic age we're celebrating your metabolic age decreasing as we get older if we don't look after our health our metabolic age increases as well and like there's plenty of people that are 25 that feel like they're 50 and there's plenty of people at 48 that feel like they're 23 and literally comes down to like how they move their body consistently every day what they put into their body every single day, how much sleep they're getting, how much rest they're getting, all the vices that they used to take that they don't no longer needing to get good energy. There's a lot to unpack there. And um, yeah. Okay. So you mentioned uh, the support in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, for someone that has been in a fitness journey, that are trying to do it in themselves, that watch daytime television, that listen to the radio or listen to what Sarah says about the next best diet, what do you have to say to these people about following and trusting the process if they join the Dream Team Academy? I would say as someone who has the track record of all the diets, like trust the process and allow yourself to be a student mm. right i think i think that's really hard for us as adults to shift our brain back to the fact that i don't know everything and to shift back in the mindset of i'm here to learn and being humble about it and being like, I don't have it all together. I don't know. And obviously I've done these other things and they haven't given me the results that I want. So why do I want to fight this if I don't know? So I would say, be a student, be a student. Just say, I'm here to learn. If, you if they tell you to do something, do it and go with the program just do it don't fight it because if you do it slows down your progress i know i did that so yep. just like when you truly sit in the place of a student and you just say teach me i'm here to learn and you do the things and you apply them the progress happens the weight comes off the strength starts happening and you're mind begins to change through the process. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to give these guys a specific example. I remember there was a fix your form segment. I, I don't remember, maybe four months ago, you were doing squats. Oh, it was the first time I saw your squats. You it put a bar so on your back. Bad. It was so yeah. bad. <laughs> but you didn't know. You had no idea. I really didn't. 
You had no idea. You put a bar on your back. I didn't know what the weight was, but it looked pretty heavy. And when you were squatting, like you were squatting in a position where like you've done this before. You had a belt on, you were bracing. And like to you, you were like, this is how we squat. This is how I squat. This is how I've moved my body for X amount of years. And I remember watching that and I thought, well, you're in the next level coaching program. This cannot continue. Like we cannot squat like this. <laughs> so we stripped all the weights back to the bare minimum. It was just the bar. And I was actually impressed by the way you handled the coaching on that time because training for 20, 30 years plus, you would have you got to have some ego, I guess. It's the one that keeps you confident. But you were able to let go and trust the process and realize, okay, Coach Pat literally just told me to take all the weights off and sit on a box and stand up. And I did. <laughs> and I and still, did. and honestly, I, you know, I just now have that back in my program. And I still do. I still use the box because I still need that, just that little extra help. That's yeah. And for those that don't know what we're talking about specifically, it was literally just the mobility um, uh, uh, issue. Once we helped with her mobility, her strength increased. So her range of motion with her squat has increased, which decreases the risk of injury. Right now I'm training a coach and I was telling her, okay, in order for us to prevent injuries from happening, we're going to make sure that they're moving correctly, not just about managing injuries. Managing injuries is not fun. Who wants to do rehab? Who wants to see a physiotherapist every week and work on little movements throughout the day to get like a joint or blood flow working? It's, I've done that. It's not fun. So decrease the weight, decrease the ego, move properly, and your longevity and fitness and health become forever. Mm -hmm. So I love it. Now, let's talk about final words. So anyone that's thinking about taking a leap of faith, wanting to lose the next 25 pounds, but they've tried all the yo-yo dieting in the past, what advice would you have to the people that are stuck and getting in their own way? Humble yourself and say yes. <laughs> like, honestly, get over yourself and don't think that you know the best thing and trust someone who has more wisdom, more knowledge, more experience than you. Submit to their teaching do what they say and learn, grow, and reach your goals. Perfect. On that point, I love it. And I just want to caveat what she had to say. You know what? Coaching is a dance. And like with coach and student, there comes a dance where the student starts in getting empowered and they start taking, like I'll give you an example. So uh, Yenny is a good example. She's a part of the Next Level Coaching Program as well. She's a... She's uh, like a nurse and she does shift work and she has kids and she's recently had um, some difficult times happen in the last few weeks. She got into a, like, a little bit of a car accident. Um, before, she wasn't able to communicate with me about her needs. She would just be like, okay, I'm just going to, like you said, submit to coaching and just do the coaching. I said like, well, I need to know what's going on. <laughs> like tell me exactly what's happening in your health and fitness journey or your personal life right now because like i can see there's a struggle like you check in with us every fortnight and there's patterns and when you send me five words versus when you send me a whole paragraph of what's going on there's a difference she's like i didn't know what to say i was kind of like embarrassed or you know ashamed of like you know what i was going through i'm like no no no, no. this is a two-way street tell me tell me what's going on and she told me what was going on i'm like okay based on your knowledge and experience of your own body, what do you think is best for you right now? So she screenshotted her whole program and she drew on like exercises and said, I can't do this one. I can do this one. I want to do this one because this is what gives me the most strength. And I love it. I don't take it away. So when you update the program, I can stick with this. I can do it long enough to get stronger. She was very like meticulous with what she wanted. We changed the whole program and now she's like, like smooth. Now she's like, taking control of her own journey as well. So that's the next level for people that are in fitness that want to like become an athlete. It's like taking over the, your fitness journey, getting empowered and using their coach as a guide, as a mentor. Think of like the coaches like Google Maps. 
tell Google Maps where to go. Google Maps says, this is the way, there's traffic here, don't go that way, go this way. So that's, to me, that's what coaching is all about. To me, that is what a fitness, a coaching relationship to a student is all about. It's about you are the driver in your front seat, Mel, and whoever is, you know, experienced enough to know that you're the driver, where do you want to go? Where do I want to go? I yeah. have so many things. So where do you want to go? I I want to be at whatever my end up goal weight is. I don't even know what that is. I want to be at my healthy spot. Um, I'm going to have to have skin surgery. So I want that so that that's the final, right? Because there's no going back. No going back to that 300. And um, I want to be a coach. I want to be a trainer. I want to help people. I'm a natural teacher. I've been teaching for over 20 years. And if I can give people the gift of hope based on my journey, then that's a win. That's powerful. Guys, you heard it here. Mel Fowler crushing it, 100 pounds down, getting leaner every day. Thank you so much, Mel. I appreciate you. Absolutely. That's it from the Newbie Gains podcast, guys. We'll talk to you on the next episode.